Okay, so we're back on the tap follower. And you might have seen that being used in my contact tip video. And I explained that this spring is just pathetic. It's an 8mm by 0.5 Y gauge. Oh, no, no, I ordered a 9mm, that's what it was. This was 9mm, D1. So it should have the same internal as that and be tight, but it didn't go on. Now it does. Not so well that way, but it does go on. So I'm better that way. So I've got quite a, a nice, tasty fit on that now. Unfortunately, I ordered it a little bit too long, I think, but not to worry. And the way I got that to fit, is I didn't take the shaft down. I wrapped a piece of emery cloth around a long screwdriver. There's a long screwdriver there. And did some bodybuilding. <laughs> Wiping the spring up and down that for about 10 minutes. But the desired effect was complete so now i have a really powerful spring but the new really powerful spring only contracts to there which is going to restrict the movement i don't know how much it's going to restrict it we'll find out now put it together I don't even know if it's gonna screw away together now I don't think that spring is gonna compress enough that spring is definitely springy now <laughs> so we're all the way in now and that is bloody tough but now I've only got about 10 mil of movement so that is not good enough Right, so I'm going to get the collet, I'm going to get the three jaw chuck off, get the collet chuck back in again. Um, take that down to 9.2 mil. That uh, spring stop in the centre. Then I'm going to put another collet in, put that back in again, bore that out to 9.3, 9.4 9 mil, 15 mil deep inside, leaving lots of threads and plenty of meat on it. Then I am going to screw it all together and take a skim down the outside. Right, 362 is the 9.2 millimeter imperial conversion, and we are at 375, 85, 390. Yeah, that's pretty manky that stuff is. I'll leave that in a little pot of oil. Um, but it does a trick. What it required. That should be bang on there. Looking for 9.2 and I got 9.33 Not happy days then I might just leave it at that and take it out to 9.4 inside the ball Yeah, we'll just do that I've got a nice finish on there now um, Took an extra polish on that, this spring might finish even better Oh yeah, that's just straight on and off now that is Yeah, yeah Okay, that's looking good. So there's only one more operation on this shaft now that I want to do, and that is to harden the tip. So we're doing that in a minute. If I can undo that, no, come on. Do it back to front. Awesome. 
So yeah, I just need to harden the tip on that now. So I'll do that, I'll oil harden that I think. I'll try and oil harden it, see what it goes like. And then we'll oil heat treat it, maybe. Uh, I haven't decided yet. But that needs hardening, that tip needs hardening now. So I'm just going to probably heat up that much at the end. But really just right a tip, get it going red hot and stick that in some oil and let it cool down really quickly. And then heat it back up to a collar and then dip that in oil and you know, bring it up to straw I think bring it up to straw at the tip and then dip it in oil and then heat it up again and dip it in oil and heat it up again and dip it in oil and that will put like a hot black surface on this front edge which will stop it from corroding and then I might do it at the rear end then as well I might just do the whole thing I might just hold it on this land here with a pair of pliers and do that final bit of corrosion Preventation. Preventation. Yeah, we'll try that with a bit of butane in a bit. Heat that tip up until it's glowing red hot. Just that very end bit there. Quench that so it's rock hard. Temper it a little bit. And then heat treat the whole thing with oil. And give it some corrosion protection. Sounds good. Although I might forget to do the old corrosion protection after I've heat treated the front end. But you never know. The surface on that now is, is wicked. It's about 320 down it. Mm, awesome. Okay, next is the counter ball. So we're going with the 932s, we're going to put a 5 8 collet in there. Find out which way it goes, there we go, in there like that. Just nip it up a little bit. Get a bit loose. Stick that in. We've got that. Yeah, that's what we've got to take the high speed steel turning tool out. It's a bit blunt now after that kind of abuse of the it. Yeah, it's just abused it. It was a proper abuse of the gavet. Okay, so we're going to take an approximation of what we've got and where we need to go to. So we're talking 7.5. 7 7.52. Mm, I bet it's not 7.52, is it? Eh? It might be. What's 0 0.7, 0 0.07 of a millimetre? It might be. Make sure these are zeroed out. Yep, zeroed. Point five three. Okay, I'm going to have to measure, make these measurements up in the calculator because that's just too much for me to think about at the same time. Boom, on 
minus seven point five seven point five three equals one point eight seven millimeters. One point eight seven millimeters. I said 1.87 1.87 so that's 0 0.74 to take out half 0.74 is not a lot half 0.74 is 353637 0.37 to take out okay 0.37 we want 15 millimeters so we'll take 15 mil yeah tell you what, before I do any of this messing around, I want a metric, I believe I've done the stupid one, oh no I haven't, that's all it's here, I was looking for my digital, digital DTI. Is the best one for doing this with. Can you see that? Yeah, probably. Don't know for sure. All I know is that is in there. I've got a lot of preload on that now, so that should give me enough. I'm going to come out. I'm going to touch the face of the Use my flop, turn that on, that should be at zero. Want it in millimeters. Come out a little bit, go in a little bit, and go in 15 mil. Oh, good grief, let's just do all that again. In touch, that's zero, that's in inches, stay in inches. Millimeters, hooray! Out there. And we want 15 millimetres. Have we got enough travel? I'll tell you what. We'll settle for 11 millimetres. It's looking a little bit fragile. We'll do anything more than that. So we'll settle for 11 millimetres, which is there. Setting the stop. So it should come down to 11, 11, 11, 11. Just come down to 11 every time. Cool. Right, that's that sorted. Now I've got to remember how many thou I'm taking out of that. Half 74 is 36, I think I was taken out of that. Last touch. That's 10 pounds.
So that last operation should have faced off the inside as well. And then we need to check if that land fits. I'm just going to blow all the dust out. Hopefully you saw loads of dust coming out the end there. This is the way it should go in with the points, but that's the thicker end. I'm just putting the thinner end in because it's got clearance. And we're going to see if we've got it in there. We're not in there yet, are we? No. So, yeah. I don't know how much more we've got to take out, but it can't be a lot. Let's check it. And for 9.4. Eight point nine, eight point eight, eight point eight. So eight point eight, I want point six more to come out. Point six. What is point six? Twenty-five foul ish. Really? It is. <laughs> So that's 20 thou out of it. 10 thou per side. Let's see if that's any closer. That's going in. Just a bit of a tight fit. I might just take an extra. Nah. Yeah, I might just take an extra bit out just to make certain. Mm. I don't know, I'm going with these tight tolerances, I like these tight tolerances, let's see if it fits in the proper way. Obviously not, it's got a burr in it now. Great. Shall I risk that? I might just take an extra five for an hour just in case. <laughs> is a loosey thing now yeah it's not made much difference but I'm sure that will be perfect now just gonna face off the front of that off and then I need to take that burr off from the inside let's see what we've got for that I think that will do it right now go straight in I think then that OK, 
kind of check that out. Yeah, she's in. Cool. Okay. Job done. Okay, I've popped the whole unit together and stuck it in the collet. And now I'm going to get rid of that nub off the end and bring the end down to 5 8 because that bit at 16.3 mil only just fits in the chuck which is not good enough let's take the stop off where it is because that's not close enough for me and then we'll readjust that stop to there yeah that's perfect and we'll skim that down as it is there. I wanted to full clean up but I don't think I'm going to get it. Unless I do something funky at the end here. Which I might well do. Just take this high speed steel out and put something carbide in. Do something funky. This is going to work. Breaking through, be careful, that might not have much little metal left on it. Be careful, because I don't have to make that again. Be careful, Schmerfel. And then a 45 on the end of that, 55. Let's see if we can put a 45 on the end of that. Okay, so it's made the end look funky and it's tightened it up and I'm not going to get it undone now, so that's what it's staying like. So that's going to start happy. I like the brass at the front, so I'm happy with the brass at the front. I'm not happy with these little, these little nicks here. So what I think I'm going to do, as soon as the mill's ready, 
we'll go back to this project again and I'm going to mill two flats, one on that side and one on that side for a spanner so a spanner can fit so it's going to be wide enough for a proper spanner to fit in not some stupid little spanner that's a proper full size snap on wide flanks wide flank drive spanner it's going to be able to fit onto both of these here and there's going to be a flat here and a flat opposite to it so you can get two spanners and undo it just crack it off and get it out and I'm going to leave that side, that side's been turned so it's going to be forced in, it's took most of the gap out and I might put some epoxy in that just to fill that up make a black line but I'm quite happy with that gap there, it ain't perfect but it's okay there she is, now I want to tap a hole and see how good she is but the tap goes into the jig we are there Just bring it back, so I've got a piece of aluminium which I'm going to rest up there Okay, like that, and then we're going to put some cutting oil inside there, like that, and locked on there. So I'm going to put some tension on the tapping jig, like that, and away we go. Now, before, what I would have definitely had to keep leaving the tail stock, so. I'm going to try and do it without moving the tail stock now and just moving this, but who knows what's going to happen. It's been pretty good. Oh, did it just do something? So there's a bit of backwards pressure on it. If you saw that, it does try and push itself out a little bit. If you look at me, see if I can zoom you into it. So if you just pay attention, obviously down here. See how I'm putting extra pressure on it there now? So I'll go up to its maximum there now. And put some more cutting fluid in there. watch this bit here so as I take the cut it sort of comes out a little bit so although this spring is like 10 times stronger than the other spring not 10 times stronger but a lot stronger than the other spring the other spring find some more tail stock in there this is working great this is way easier. I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Yeah, so you see what it's doing. On the power stroke, it sort of backs off a little bit. Maybe I should have made it a little bit, uh, a bit more play in it. <laughs> In. So once we get this off, just oh, yeah. I should like to try the threads in it. I've just caught an idea for doing it. Uh, where's the tap? Here's the tap here. Put it back into neutral. Put the tap back in it again. Just make sure these first threads are okay. Yep. And I should like to know those tap threads are good. 
So I'll take the tool post off and we'll wind it into it and see what happens. These are M14, so that's metric 14 coarse threads. That's what the nut is at the top there. So I'll take the tool post off. A lot of suction on that because of the grease and the oil up inside it. Yes, they do. So that's the startings of the next project and the finishings of this project. Tap and jig works. 